Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And a warm welcome to this house service. Um, and a special welcome to any guests or visitors who have one among us here this morning. I hope and pray that you'll, you'll enjoy the service, although it's limited due to circumstances. But I'm sure that you'll be blessed and be refreshed and renewed and have got a close relationship to God. Amen. Let us go. As we light the first candle, we remember Abraham, Isaac, Moses, and David. And like them, we look forward to the coming, to the coming Messiah. As we light the second candle, we remember Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Micah, and we prepare the way for the Messiah who was to come. As we light the third candle, we remember John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way for the Lord. Today, we remember Joseph, worn out traveler and worried husband, doing what is necessary for the sake of his family, the burden of poverty, stifling his hope in promise of God. There was no room for them, yet he knows to whom they belong. Today we give thanks to the Josephs among us, migrating far from home when there is no choice, fiercely devoted to the ones they love, unwavering in their belief that there is room for all in the kingdom of God. We light this fourth candle as a symbol of Joseph who knocks at the door ready to take his place among royalty. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. 
colleague for the day. God of Elizabeth and Mary, make our hearts beat with joy. Fill our hearts with songs of praise and make us ready to welcome the Christ in our midst, who is alive and dead with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory and everlasting. Amen. We will say the code of prayer. Loving God, who resides to our oldest and our being, behold, we give in this and pray that we may be suffering of our world at this time. We believe precious lives lost and in our own lives stricken. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors, standing before the uncertain future. May our love not here go on. Inspire our leaders to deserve and choose wisely, aligned with the common good. Help us to practice social distancing and reveal to us new and creative ways to come together to protect and celebrate. Call us to profound trust in your faithful visions. Use the power who has not abandoned. Amen. We will now have our first view. First reading is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5a. Micah 5, 2 to 5a. But you, Bethlehem, Ephraim, though you are small amongst the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she will be who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shift his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders, Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, reading from verse 5 to 10. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, we said, Sacrifice and offering he did not desire, but the body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you are not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written, it is written about in the scroll. I have come to do your work, my God. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not desire. Nor were you pleased with it. Though they were offered in accordance with the law, then he said, Here I am, I will come to do your will. He set aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll have a gradual hymn now. And after the evening, will you stand for the reading of the gospel?
Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning at the 29th verse. Glory Glory to Christ, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, then the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she was said to be unable to conceive in a sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in the womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, Blessed is the child you will be. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Good morning, St. Philips. It is indeed a privilege to be here this morning. Um, I'm very honored and, and I'm so happy to present Kat and Natalie for the invitation. I hope that um, I will do it justice um, as we open the steps here again with Cape Town, South Africa. Um, today is a, a very interesting day um, for me. A good friend of mine would have celebrated his 29th birthday today. Um, and um, he has a seven month seven month old son. Um, yeah. And so, so today is not an easy day. Um, also I want to say that yes, Lala is pregnant and you in fear, but she's really <coughs> that it's gonna be like the 28th of January, I'm not sure why I should have been my And so the invitation for, for you is to, is to journey with me this morning uh, because while I do believe that it is in God's name, it will help if you also participate. Um, and so I, I was thinking about these four moments um, that 
I think that he was appreciating that we use in Mr. John's leadership academy. Um, that's part of the cycle. And I almost want to start with the fourth moment, which is an action moment. And, and I have a few questions for us that I'll ask later at the end as well. Um, and so if you don't mind, um, you can answer this in your heart or in your mind, or if you feel comfortable, I'd love. Um, but this, this is specifically for this Advent season that we're in. What does Advent look like um, this year after 2020 and 2021? What does our gifting and, and buying gifts look like as we approach this um, memorable and miraculous time of the year? What does our meal plan for the big days look like? And, and how do we share that with others? What does our interaction with our neighbors look like? Behind masks and needing to keep a distance. What does it look like to, to be with our sisters and brothers? Like I said, I'll come back to, to those questions. And so Mary is pregnant. Um, and, I, and I want to name a few things as we think about what pregnancy means for us. Um, because for too long, I think, Especially for myself, I speak for myself and not, not on your behalf. As a, as a person of color, sometimes we don't name things um, and we just take it for granted. And, and we sometimes don't benefit from it because we don't name it. And so can we for a moment remember that there has been a time where all of us have played some kind of role or participated in some kind of pregnancy. Um, whether you were given birth to, or you were involved in the procreation, you may have experienced the miscarriage, stillborn, or lost the little one hours or days after birth. You may have given birth yourself, watched your spouse give birth. You are adopted or fostered, or have adopted or fostered. In some or more ways, we have each been in connection or in relation, at least to some kind of pregnancy or giving birth. And as we read the story, um, I think it's important for us to become aware and to name how that, what we take when we read it, and also what we take from it when we read it. And so I name those things as a, as a reflection of the things that we can take with us even before we read the sticks. The second moment that, that I would like to stop and pause at is, is that we are uh, in this fourth wave of COVID um, and for some of us it's, it's been like for many of us it's been a real challenge to, to navigate through this um, and adapt to these things like mask wearing and, and keeping our distance constantly washing our hands making sure that we don't touch certain things I find it very interesting when you're walking in a mall and people still touch the black belt of the escalator because I think, like even before COVID, you don't do that. Um, because there's so many people that are touching it already. And so we are not necessarily sure when it's okay to, to take off our mask. Sometimes we, we need a reminder to keep distancing. And we also need to plan differently. Um, whether it's things like hosting a service like this, or a wedding, or a funeral, um, and even birthday parties that we haven't been having as normal, we've had to make special arrangements. Um, Lauren and I, or our 
sister um, hosted a, a drive-by for us in anticipation of the birth, which is like this new kind of thing. You're, just, you're supposed to just stop, um, hand over a gift, we hand over a gift to say thank you, and then you, you go on your way. You sometimes squeeze in a picture, um, and depending on how you've developed bubbles, you can even score a bank account with the person. We also just come through a, an election season, which, while some of us take it for granted and just didn't vote, others voted well after 9 pm because of queues, and some of us couldn't vote because we didn't go to the correct voting station. I am guilty of that, I'm sorry. <laughs> we live in a city um, where laws are being changed and amended to suit certain people, um, but also then to push others away. One of these recent uh, laws was about um, homeless people, people, I don't like to use the word homeless, not because I think it's a, it's, it's a bad word, I think it just doesn't describe fully the fact that some people can't pay rent or can't, um, that doesn't necessarily make them homeless. And so people don't have the resources to stay in a house, some not even for one night. And as we are reading and remembering, some not even enough for space to give birth. What are some of the other ways capital that is extorted being before and during the season? Is this new, um, for those of you who travel, this thing about this red list. Now, I am sorry, but if you have a, a problem with the red list um, in this day and age, then it shows where you are located. And for a lot of people in this country that we live in, that thing of the red list except for it being connected to tourism and employment and people being able to put food on, food on the table. Like, if you couldn't go to England or to London or to wherever, then you must check yourself. People have also been positioned whether or, whether or not they've got the vaccination. Um, and it's becoming a more contentious thing as we um, think of things like tourism, but also um, there was this uh, 109 kilometer cyclist a few months ago, where one of the things was that if you're not vaccinated, you actually have to get a test before you register. And you have to pay for the test yourself. So there's like this whole money thing involved. I fortunately was able to get vaccinated. Um, and so I didn't have to take the test before I took the ride. But people are being almost coerced into doing this thing. And some are saying like, what's your problem? Why didn't you just get vaccinated? Others are like, I don't have to get vaccinated. And so this morning, I don't know where I sit on the spectrum of you should get vaccinated or not. Um, not necessarily for the reasons of gaining access to be wherever you feel you want to and can be. But what does that mean for us? This time and this day that we are on the way, how are we being excluded or how are others being included in different spaces? And so I'm going to read a portion of the, the gospel reading today, and and I want you to to consider um, what that what that means for you, like going back to the text now and listening through it or, or reading it on your own. Um, I'm going to read from verse 39. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea 
to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to me, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. There is like often moments where God in there has this sensation or the feeling of the baby moving. And it's good, it's important because the baby should be moving. But often she would like tell me, just put your hand in that field. And then this next day, like, and I'm like, yo, what's happening here? Like, and then there are moments when I do get to feel it and it's like, yo, something is happening here. This is amazing. But the question I have for you is, what are some of the thoughts um, that go through your mind that, that God's inviting you to as we read this portion of scripture? I, I have three that I would like to offer you. Um, and I want to ask you to hold lightly, very gently, and maybe to pay more attention to what God is saying to you and to share that with someone at some time. And so the first one is about this, this physical experience that Elizabeth has. Like there's this real thing that happens inside of a body. Because of Jesus. Because Jesus is there. Even though Jesus is still in Mary's room. Jesus is there. And so Psalm 139 refers to us being fearfully and wonderfully made. And so if we are fearfully and wonderfully made and our bodies can speak and Elizabeth's child knows that Jesus is here, what are some of the things that God does in our bodies to tell us things? A few uh, months ago, I had the invitation to lead worship um, in a space. And um, as I was ready to do this, I had this feeling in my body. Um, and it wasn't a little feeling, it was like an awkward, uncomfortable feeling that I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew that something wasn't right. And I needed to stop what I was doing. So I was supposed to be leading worship in this place and I, I get up and we walk into the front, myself and Keegan, and I said to him, look, um, I don't think I can do this. And then, um, because of something else that happened in the particular space, like I, I go up to the mic just like this and I say, I'm really sorry, I don't feel like safe and I need to leave. And so I, I leave. Um, but the thing about this, this invitation that I want to share with you is that these things that we feel in our body, it's, it's real. Um, and it's important for us to take note and ask and reflect with others around us. What is God calling me to? And so when I made the right decision in that moment or not, I listened to my body. Listen to your body. What we carry in our bodies is real. The, the second um, piece that I want you to know very gently is the, the words of Jesus, and we read it earlier, that summed up in, in four words for, for some of us. Um, Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40. Love God and love people. Jesus, um, some would say, compresses the, the commandments into those. Um, words for us to make it a little bit more simple. And so there's this story of a friend of mine who goes to a, a 
coffee shop and he has a bag, so I'm going to lend the coffee shop, he has a bag experience at the coffee shop. Um, and the way he describes it is that there's this uh, racial thing that happens and he, um, he just feels like this isn't right. And so as he's telling me the story, I'm, I'm listening to it and I'm thinking about a whole bunch of other things that come with the story. And I wonder how do I love God and love people in this situation? How do I show love to my friend? And I think about it for some time and then make the decision that even though I don't earn a lot of money and I don't spend a lot of money, I'm not going to spend money at that coffee shop. Um, because of the situation my friend found himself in. And I wonder how many other situations we find ourselves in that make us feel uncomfortable or unwanted or excluded and we don't always tell the story but we also then don't listen to the story through loving each other and what would that mean if more of us took that story and we applied it to our own lives even though we were not there even though we were not told or asked to move to a different table to accommodate someone else. Next week, um, we look more closely at this situation at the inn where there is no space. And so, Mary and Joseph find an alternative space. But what does that look like for us? in our lives <coughs> with space and land and homelessness and what it costs to live comfortably. What does it look like when we need to give birth at the clinic or hospital or at home? And then the third thing I'd like to offer us today is that following on from these last two years um, of us being in the situation where COVID is coming and going and coming and going and sometimes that coming looks very close to home um, and other times it's a bit easier to manage our feelings about it because it's a little bit further away from us. <laughs> Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2 says therefore since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip of every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding and shame. Now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. Wow, I told you the story of my friend who, who should be saying celebrating his birthday today. There's this back and forth about life and death, death that's waiting for all of us, like at some point in time. Um, but every time I think about his death, I think like, yo, this should not have happened. Like, he should still be here with us. <coughs> And so you might also be in a position where there's someone really close to you who's no longer with you. Someone who, when we picture the end of this pandemic, you picture them there, like with us. Because we would have made it through. 
We were stuck together and we had to The invitation from the Jews is this one of fixing our eyes on Jesus. And so this Advent season, I want to encourage you to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus as we journey through this expectation of Jesus coming again. Um, we have this privilege of hindsight where we, we almost know how the story goes in the text, but every time we read it, there's different things that come up for us and we learn about who God is and who Jesus is inviting us to be. And so while we are in this sometimes valley and sometimes mountain top, Jesus doesn't change. God continues to be with us. Emmanuel. And so I want to ask you those four questions again, and you might have other questions as well, as we continue to journey through this Advent season. What's different about Advent this year after we've had 2020 and now 2021? with lots of ups and downs, but specifically this thing we call COVID. What does it look like as we share our gifts, but also buy gifts for our family and our friends and our loved ones? What does it look like to plan and meal together? Because Christmas is a big deal, like it's a great Christmas to me. But what does it look like this year? And then the last one is, what does our interaction with our neighbors or our sisters and brothers look like? My prayer is that as we continue to anticipate this moment that Jesus arrives, that this story where Elizabeth has this really real theme inside of her, this leap that the baby does, that we will be attentive to our bodies, that we will be attentive to what's happening with the people around us, whether that's near or far, and that we will continue to fix our eyes on Jesus. God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and give thanks for all of them. Receive our prayers for the universal church, that it may know the power of your spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and glory in love. We pray for your servant Joshua, our bishop, together with Tabo, our metropolitan and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Kate and Andrew as she leads the people in St. Philip's. 
the author prays a full, accurate, for God's guidance and blessings on his man's family. We pray for Christina Deacon, Lord, keep her safe and blessed with her the ministry years and St. Philip's. Thank you, Lord, for our preacher, Charlton and his mother. May the words spoken dwell in our hearts, that by the love and teaching, your glory may be revealed, and all nations glory to you. God and Christ, we pray, those who strive for the spirit of the gospel, and enlightened with your spirit to all places of work, living and healing. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations. We pray for our rulers of this country, pray that your light and love will shine into their hearts, that ruling with wisdom and justice they may promote peace and all being in this world. To this congregation and to all your people in their different callings, give your heavenly grace that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts and serve you true to all the days of our life. In your compassion, Father, comfort and be in those who are in trouble, sorrow, need and sickness. We pray for your parishioners here at St. Philip's. We pray for Joe, Fred and Tommy Austin's, Brenda Prince and Helen. May God's healing power be upon all of you. We praise and thank you for your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of Jesus Christ our Lord, and for the heroes of the faith in every generation. And we remember before you your servants who have died. Lord, we thank you for the love of Jesus, for his commitment to the work you have placed on his heart. And as and the role he has played in the men's ministry, and all that he meant to us here at St. Philip's. We pray for his wife, Brenda, and his family, that you, Lord, will bring comfort to them, praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your angel joy. Grant this holy Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen.
This is our you God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. This is our you Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes a cup of salvation. The Lord is here. He is
thanks to the Lord who God is gracious. He be to the Lord's prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out of the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God, in this
you are asking us to learn new ways of learning and reflecting um, what God is calling us to be today, especially um, during this pandemic. Thank you. There are services this week. Please check your, uh, your WhatsApp. If you are not in the church WhatsApp group, please message me directly. Because if there's anyone who's not in the issue there, it should be mine. Um, so that we can add you to the WhatsApp group. But these are the services. Um, please register for them. The service for Christmas Eve, the link for, for Christmas Eve will go in will go live tomorrow. Um, so please register because we can only have a limited amount. Any other notices, Peter? The office is closing on the 24th um, at 12 o'clock. So if there's anything that you need to get or need to communicate with Dodge, um, please do so before then. And I would please encourage you not to connect with Dodge. There is a church office number. Please don't um, send Dodge messages on his personal cell phone number, especially while he's taking a break. Um, you should, should be in touch with me or with the Lord. Will you please stand? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you and those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. So we have plenty in class, it is going peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of